selling your house is one of the most stressful things you can do. And in today's tricky market, it's got a whole lot harder. We're on a mission to turn unsellable houses into unstoppable sellers. I'm going to get the best out of the houses. While I get the best out of the estate agents. Together, we're going to show you the tricks of the trade to make an unsellable house sellable. Coming up on today's programme... A neglected lemon in London's Limehouse leaves a sour taste. Wow. I'm almost rendered speechless. And I try to get the owner of this riverside pad to abandon ship. The best thing you could do is to move out. Today's Unsellable is on the Regent's Canal next to Limehouse Basin, which is a short hop, skip and a jump to Canary Wharf and very close to the city. It has three bedrooms, three bathrooms and a great view of the Thames. It was originally listed at £830,000, but with zero offers, it's been dropped to £795,000. It's been on the market six months. It's had only four viewings and no offers, so that is obviously a problem, and we are on a mission to find out what it is. I'm going to talk to the estate agent and find out why this property is stubbornly refusing to budge. And I'm going to take a look inside and tackle the problem head on. Meet Gary. He's spent over 14 years at his current address. Since his divorce, he's been spending his time between his home and a tough work schedule. I lead a very busy life myself. Um, I work a good 10 to 12 hours a day. I've been commuting um, to Croydon for nine years. It's a really difficult commute. And on a bad day, it can be an hour and 20 just to do that 12 miles. And rather sadly, I once counted that there's 47 sets of traffic lights on the uh, drive to work. So, with big plans on moving closer to work, he was hoping that his house would be in the fast lane when it came to a sale. The house has been on the market for around four months, maybe five months now. In that time, I've had about maybe four to five viewings, but absolutely no offers. Initially, I was quite surprised uh, that I wasn't getting any offers. But even in the current sort of climate, I did feel that the location would, would sell the house. I think one of the problems is that there's a lot of property around Canary Wharf and Limehouse, and I think people have got a lot of choice. This commuter will be stuck fast if something isn't done. So if John and Sophie could help me to sell this house, that would be fantastic. We'll give it a go. Waterfront properties like these are usually really popular, so I'm guessing the problems with this house are on the inside. I was right. Wow. This is very strange. In here, it's like early 90s bachelor pad, all, like, leather sofas, very masculine. Yeah, this is definitely a man's pad. You've got pictures of Ayrton Senna and Formula One on the walls, leather sofas, big telly. This is most definitely a bloke's room. What is this? Looks like someone skinned a Yeti to make this. Quite intrigued to see the rest of the house. Makes me wonder what the master bedroom will be like. I cannot believe a man lives in this bedroom. It's a riot of peppermint, peach and lilac ruffles. It's got this incredible pointed window. It's like a chapel to chintz. This room should be fantastic. You have a view of Canary Wharf. So much storage. This is every woman's dream. You could put hundreds of shoes in here. And ensuite bathroom. This is a princess palace, but buyers here want cool and trendy. Now I'm looking for the last bedroom, but I found this. I wonder why they've got the table pushed back here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, a sofa bed. This house is advertised as a three-bedroom. A sofa bed in the dining room does not make a three-bedroom house. They push the table back so they can pull the bed out, but it makes the room look quite peculiar. Is it a sitting room? Is it a dining room? Who knows? The problem about doing up a house like this in this style is these developments, they're quite new, but if your furniture's dated, they immediately look much older. 
People buying in this neighbourhood will be looking for hot interiors, and Gary's isn't even lukewarm. And this will have to be a bedroom. On paper, this house is really cool. Waterside development overlooking Canary Wharf? In reality, no. It's outdated, it's chintzy, there's way too much lilac, and in its present state, it's totally unsellable. Well, I'm off to meet the estate agent, but before I do, I want to have a good look around Limehouse and find out just what it is that makes this area unique. Limehouse is located right on the lifeline of London, the River Thames. Filled with warehouse conversions and newer homes, it's just a short walk to Canary Wharf and has excellent links to the city. What's more, it's close to the bars, restaurants and galleries of the trendy East End. So, with big business and world-class culture around the corner, why isn't this property selling? Well, it could be that the last time Gary's home was decorated was when his ex-wife did it many years ago. If he wants to sell, it's time for me to get tough. Gary, would you say you spent most of your time in this room? Yes, most of my leisure time is spent in this room. I sort of um, bought the three-piece and the new TV, mm -hmm. the tables, etc., etc. Yeah, so. Gary, it looks like it's been decorated by the Top Gear team. I walked into this room and I'm like, black leather, big, yeah, big yeah. TV, Formula One, it's yeah. very masculine. And it's not just the boys' toys that are a problem. There's a certain clash. Yeah. You've got the green carpet, the old-fashioned curtains yeah. over the brass pole yeah, and yeah. the uplighters. I think it probably typifies the fact that I've been on my own for some years and, mm. and, and it just lacks, you know, some influence from another area, I suppose. Yeah. And is this next room yours, Gary? I think you know what I'm going to say in this room, don't you, Gary? Are they not in a guy's room? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> so I walked in here and I was like, OK, we've, we've got lilac ruffles, we've got peach, we've got peppermint, peach on the walls. And then I looked at the books and we've got Formula One, yeah, yeah, yeah. football, fishing, no, golf. It's, it's, it's laziness on my part. Gary needs to understand that an attractive master bedroom is a must when selling. And if he can't be bothered, neither will a buyer. This is a really spectacular room. You've got a ginormous window overlooking Canary Wharf. You've got cupboards that would make Sarah Jessica Parker happy. And you've got an ensuite bathroom. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. But I just don't think I could have lived with those bedside tables. Um, no comment. <laughs> it is sort of lacking some, I suppose, investment in, uh, in the decor and mm -hmm. the interior. And the next room doesn't know what it is. What is the function of this room? Is it dining room? Is it is it bedroom? Is it sitting room? Is it's slightly confusing. The last time I had dinner in this room was the millennium, so you know. <laughs> well, if a viewer notices a missing bedroom, it'll be another millennium before Gary can move closer to work. So this room basically needs to go from dining room slash bedroom slash sitting room to contemporary modern bedroom. I agree with you. Yeah. And then this house will have the three bedrooms that it claims to have yep. and everyone will be happy. If someone was looking for a high-end property in Limehouse, the last thing they'd want to take on is this neglected house that's missing a bedroom. It's no wonder this commuter isn't on the move. Limehouse has bags of character and history. We're here in Narrow Street, the unofficial heart of Limehouse. Just up the road, you've got Gordon Ramsay's posh new gastro pub. Here, you've got a marvellous traditional old boozer. Now, this is said to have featured in Charles Dickens' last novel, Our Mutual Friend. Sounds brilliant, doesn't it? Let's find out what the locals think. What's so great about the river? Wonderful. You can sit there and watch it all day long, morning and evening. And do you get, have you got river views out of your house? Absolutely. Then? They're great places to walk, in the park just over the road, great shops, restaurants. I like my house a lot. Good place for walking around and seeing interesting people doing interesting things. It has all the perks any city dweller would want, but, uncommon for London, it also has something of a community feel, perfect for professionals and families. There's good schools, there's places to go, there's the park. Great. It's nice. Great location, good pubs, nice restaurants, well, well situated. Fantastic. You're sort of working for the local council trying to sell the place, isn't <laughs> no, it? Is not it? at all. <laughs> I just enjoy being here. Well, people seem to have only good things to say about this area. You've got the river right on your doorstep, loads of history and a real mixture of the old and the new. So, Limehouse is a great area.
And what's more, urban sophisticates with deep, deep pockets want to live here. It's certainly not the location that's stopping this house from being sold. Gary's been commuting backwards and forwards from Limehouse to Croydon for years. He spends more time in his car than his home, and he just can't take it anymore. So to get his home on the road, we're getting his house into gear. And that means an unsellable declutter. It's curtains for the curtains. We're throwing out that big hairy throw and packing the china and assorted ornamental knickknacks for storage. And plates belong on the table, not the wall. They're not really going with our new theme. OK, so... well, go ahead. Oh, there you go. So the plates are packed up, and with the last bits boxed up, I now have a fresh canvas to work with. Now I can carry on with my design plan to turn this place from unsellable to sellable. If you'd bought a property in Limehouse 14 years ago, you'd have seen your investment grow by 400%. And homes around here are still selling, as these recent unstoppable sellers just go to prove. Two-bedroom apartment, a 1,000 square feet, river view and two balconies. On the market for three months, sold for £650,000. Warehouse conversion, communal swimming pool, three bedrooms, sold for £620,000. Four-bedroom townhouse, courtyard view, terrace and two balconies. On the market for two months, sold for £952,000. We've taken everything out of Gary's Limehouse Riverside property, but it's not all plain sailing yet. This house is in need of a total overhaul. The interior, it's dark, it's dated, but luckily we've got a design plan to sort it out. First up, we're going to make the masculine sitting room more appealing to both sexes. For his girly bedroom, we're making it less chintz and more chic. And finally, to help with the home's marketability, we're transforming his unused dining area slash guest room into an actual bedroom. To make it more contemporary, we're taking out the dated pastel rug, dining table and furnishings. We're going to add a splash of colour on one wall and go neutral on the rest. A well-dressed bed and stylish furnishings will make this the modern bedroom buyers expect to see. I'm off to meet Gary's estate agent, Elizabeth, to find out if it's just the decor that's letting this property down. You tell me why it isn't selling. I don't think the photographs do it justice, to be honest. Um, if we had photographs that showed it in a better light, I think there would be more people asking to see it. So, you know, yes, it does need a wow factor. It's very true that that is absolutely something that sells. That does beg the question, who took the photos? You did, right? It's a polite way of saying it's not terribly well presented. Well, Elizabeth, it's been six months, so now's not the time to be polite. I don't think you're being tough enough with him. From the last conversation I had with him about, you know, where do you want to go from here, I got a response of, I'm happy to leave it on the market. If you're happy to leave it on the market, let's see what happens. Got to be disappointed with that. Yes, we are, because... Limehouse is a very sought-after area. There are very few houses in Limehouse. With the greatest respect, I think this is mad because he doesn't know how it works. You're the estate agent. You know how to sell a house. And to me, just saying, um, leave it and see what happens, to me, no, that's sounds... that's what he said to me. Yeah, I know, I know. Happens. But to me, it sounds like we're not going to sell it. He's not in a huge rush because we know that there is a lot of equity in that property. <laughs> I knew it. Gary's not giving it his all, and it's holding back the sale. But I think I've got an idea to get them out of this mess. Here's a suggestion for you. He's already got loads of equity in the house. What about he moves out, does the place up so it looks brilliant, and presents a property ready to move into? In an ideal world, the easiest property to sell is the one that doesn't have anybody in there, where it's sole agency, we've got a key, we can take them in at any time, it's realistically priced, and it's beautifully presented. Fantastic. Great! It doesn't matter how much equity Gary has in the house if he isn't putting the effort in. He really needs to move out to sell the house to put an end to his commuting days. Make sure your property lives up to the estate agent's details. 
If they say it's got three bedrooms, make sure you're presenting it as having three bedrooms. If you're selling in an area that's got a good, long-established property market, then it's going to ride out any short-term dips. Make sure your agent isn't just emphasising that your house is a great place to live, but also that it's a good, solid, long-term investment. Make sure you've got an agent who can think laterally. This is especially important in a tough market. They may be presenting your house as a city crash pad, but with a bit of work, it could make a lovely family home. Make sure your agent doesn't have tunnel vision. When we first met Gary, his Limehouse property in London was a prime location, but lousy for his work. One of the reasons that I really need to move and would really like to move is the commuting, which I've never enjoyed commuting. He may have decided to move house, but unfortunately, his house isn't moving. So to get this property on the road, we've stepped in. We've stripped out the sorry dining room, shucked out the chintz from the bedroom, to begin with a blank slate. So we can squeeze this dated Limehouse property into something a bit juicier. Hey, how's it going? Well, I think it's going pretty well. I've had a good long chat with the agent. I think I've got some ideas on what's going wrong mm -hmm. and what we've got to do to, to get the place moving. I've got some ideas for Gary, but they're a little bit radical. I'm not sure if he's going to go for it. You never know. Well, this house is being marketed as a three-bedroom and there is only two bedrooms. So we're turning the dining room into a bedroom and Gary's room is so 80s. I mean, we're talking lilac ruffles, peach wallpaper. Nice. So I'm going to make that a bit more contemporary. So it's going well. Better get cracking then. I'm going to put the kettle on. What do you want? Uh, tea, milk, one sugar. Thanks. Now that everything is cleared out, we're pulling out our brushes and taking no prisoners. Gary's peach-coloured bedroom left a sour taste, so we're going for something easier to stomach. With a cool blue, this room goes from tacky to tasteful. When prepping your house, painting is the easiest, most affordable way of freshening any room that's past its expiry date. My plan is to transform Gary's old dining room into another bedroom. So, to get it going, we're giving it a splash of raspberry. This will add character and make it more contemporary. And since we're dealing with the walls, Gary's bachelor living room is in need of a lady's touch. A wallpaper accent wall like this one is a great way of adding some style and personality to a room. Our hard work is just beginning. And since we're gaining one bedroom, we're short one bed, so we're building one from scratch. Don't be afraid of DIY projects like this. Building it yourself will save a couple of pounds and, in the long run, you'll be sure to get exactly what you want. We came, we sewed, we conquered. But there's still more work for us to do to turn this place around. Now that I've talked to the estate agent, I think we have a strategy. To move Gary's home, we're asking him to move out. But asking him to relocate until it's sold could be a tough sell. I'm going to see if he goes for it. Hi, Gary. How's it going? Hello, John. Nice to see you. Um, right, well, I've been having a chat with Elizabeth, the estate agent. Yes, I know that. Um, what sort of a job do you think she's doing at the moment? I think, um, despite the fact that we haven't sold the house in all this time, I think she seems to have done a reasonable job. The other question I wanted to ask you is, you know, how badly do you want to sell the house? Because I'm getting the impression that she doesn't think it's very urgent to get it sold. She showed us an email from you when you said, well, you know, whatever happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the impression she's got. You know, as much as I do like Limehouse, that I do have to move. No, I think absolutely you've got to, you know, when you commit, you've really got to commit. People absolutely. do, I mean, people sort of hate leaving their houses, but you can't half sell it. You either sell it or you don't sell it. Yeah. And what we're talking about is, and this is radical, the best thing is if you moved out. What, what does she see as the advantage there? The advantage is that she can have the keys, she can show people at any time. That will immediately get more viewers through the door. Well, we could look at the feasibility. Uh, you know, in terms of... I've, I've got a friend nearby, actually, who I could, uh, I could sort of rent a room from, so it is feasible, actually. I actually think it sounds a really good strategy. Um, you know, a strategy to get more people into the house has got to be good. All right, great. Well, let's, let's see how we go, and then it's over to Elizabeth. Excellent, John. A house that is already vacated is always a plus point for buyers. 
It's been an uphill battle, but we've turned this house around. While Gary takes a break, we're taking care of some final details. Each room has a new splash of colour, but don't be too eager to throw things out. A lick of paint can breathe new life into old furniture. Just a few more details to iron out, such as switching old tired fittings. These clean white curtains will let in more light and make his bedroom more up to date. Now this room with its lilac ruffles and peach wallpaper screamed the 80s, but now it's definitely in vogue. And Gary's dining room is converted into the extra bedroom that was being advertised. If you're marketing your property as a three bedroom home, now that's exactly what buyers are expecting to find. So if you get a divan like this one, it's simple, it's cost effective, and if you dress it with linen, hey presto, you've got the third bedroom that buyers are expecting. Some well-placed ornaments, pictures, cushions, and this house will look perfect. It's taken some doing, but in the end, the hard work will have been worth it. This house now makes the grade for potential trendy buyers. Just a few days ago, Gary's three-bed Riverside property in Limehouse seemed destined to be ignored. It was conspicuously missing one of its bedrooms, and the design plan was stuck in a time warp. Too girly in one room, too blokey in another, and neglected throughout. After almost six months on the market, he'd had no offers. Then the unsellables moved in and the transformation began. Gary's master bedroom was anything but dreamy. It had a feminine touch but was simply outdated. Its pastel shades washed out the room. Now that I got my hands on it, it's a completely different story. An infusion of colour has injected a bit of life into this room. The sheer white window dressings now frame that fantastic view. Gary's living room looked like an outdated bachelor pad, with its cold, monochrome black leather furnishings, giant TV and minimalist presentation. Now, with a new contemporary wallpaper, this room makes a more sophisticated statement. Pops of colour with zesty green cushions put some lime into Limehouse. And finally, the bedroom that was disguised has now been unmasked. This room has gone from dated motel to boutique hotel. Our elegant bed linen and cool accessories make this a hip London home. For the first time, the interior decor is as trendy as the location. Now it's time for the verdict from the man himself. Are you nervous? I am apprehensive and a little nervous now, yes, but also really excited. Come on, then. OK. Let me say, first of all, I think the room looks fabulous. I think that that brass really contrasts nicely with that blue. I think it looks beautiful. And I think the, the curtains look great as well. And yeah. I, think, I think, overall, the room is, is, is gorgeous. A great start, but what will he make of the sitting room? Come on in, Gary. My God. OK. So Absolutely fantastic. Because this was the most contemporary room in the house, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But it was kind of lacking that little bit extra. Yeah. So what do you think of the wallpaper? I love the wallpaper. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Really matches all my black and, and stuff here and the, and the thing. And the cushions are absolutely wonderful. So you're pleased? Yes, I think it looks absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much, Sophie. Well, come on next door, then. OK. My word. <laughs> come on in. What a difference. <laughs> so, cast your mind back. What did this room look like? Uh, it didn't look like anything, did it? Because we had the dining room table, we had a great big oversized rug. This was still there, that's, that's good. But this is just absolutely amazing. The transformation is just incredible. Absolutely wonderful room. Brilliant. Thank you again, Sophie. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm just so happy you like it. <laughs> Fantastic. Gary's ecstatic and so are we. For the first time, this house is now truly sellable. And what does Elizabeth, the estate agent, think of the home's new look? I think what Sophie and the team have done was exactly what was needed. Um, now I think the property is a lot more neutral and not more, a lot more minimalist. Um, it's what people want to see. Let's hope the potential buyers agree. 
Elizabeth has lined up three viewings for today, the most she's seen in months. Right, come in, so this is lounge. You know, nice bright room. It's good to have a feature wall. I think it's a, it's a good size, mm -hmm. um, and it's perfect for a lounge, really, in the size of house. And the next viewer agrees. And what do you think? I love the wallpaper. Yeah, it's fantastic. Success, we've really hit the mark. By updating the decor, this room is now a big selling feature. This one is the third bedroom. You get sun in the afternoon on this one. Um, again, a really good size. The places I've seen, the third bedroom is very tiny. No. So it's nice to have all the rooms with a lot of space. Yeah. I like the, the future wall. It is lovely, isn't and it? And it is a nice size. Our instincts were bang on. Going for a bold colour has been a big hit with potential buyers. I think the future wall is brilliant. It's great. It's a, lovely, it's a lovely space. It really looks like all our hard work has paid off. I think the property has got a lot of positives to it. The rooms are a very nice size. Um, the decor is, is lovely. It's a very nice, spacious property. I really like the fact that all the rooms had a lot of space in it and um, just has a nice feel. It's lovely and it's been, been kept beautifully. I would definitely be interested in a second viewing. Um, I, would, I would consider it. Well, a second viewing would be a good start. Now, if Elizabeth can keep them coming through the door, then it shouldn't be long before an offer's been made. This place is really transformed. Gary's home looks like a million dollars. The team worked really hard and I couldn't be more pleased. Yeah, the interior's been transformed, the marketing's been transformed as well. I think we've got a much better chance of selling this property now. I hope so. Well, come on, John, I think our work here is done. It's been six weeks and since then there's been some real progress. Although Gary didn't move out of the house, it was more available for viewings, and as a result, they went up 300%. So it shouldn't be too long until there's an offer on this property. It's been a long journey, but we've really turned Gary's home from unsellable to sellable. <laughs>